we're up. Go get your cup of coffee. Come on. The Lord's here already. And uh, he's got a lot to tell us today. There's a lot with these readings. Oh, my gosh. Today is the August 8th, and it's the Memorial of St. Dominic. I love St. Dominic's. It was my confirmation name. And again, so let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, today's gospel, I'm not going to read the whole thing, just the first paragraph, because I want you to really focus on that and meditate on that today. As Jesus and his disciples were gathered in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. And they were overwhelmed with grief. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Now, Jesus is talking about his death. I got a cross here. I spent a lot of hours. When I was first ordained in 1989, those first couple years, I kept looking at certain saints. And I thought, well, I'll start with... You know, my, the saints, you know, Brian, Joseph, Dominic, Kirby. I'd looked at, you know, St. Joseph and also uh, Joseph in the in, in the book of Genesis, uh, you know, the coat of many, many colors. I, I looked at his life. I looked at St. Dominic, my confirmation name. And, and one of the things I noticed was St. Dominic. That was a time when there's a lot of heretics. Oh, what sounds like today. Whoa, there's a lot of people who are anti-Christian. Oh, a lot of people who hate Christians, it's the world, Scripture tells us, hates us, okay? The closer you grow to the Lord, okay, the more people are going to hate you, and the world will hate you. I'm talking about the world hating you, okay? So it's important that we learn the power of this and how to bring it to test. We're not supposed to just sit there and, and look at the cross and stay at the cross. There's a process to growing into intimacy with God. So I'm going to teach that to you right now. But Dominic, before going out and preaching to the heretics, would for hours on hours just meditate on the wounds of Jesus. He's not the only one who did this. Many, many other saints and mystics did it too and found great power in this. And so take time today and follow what I'm doing. I'm also at the healing masses when you come. I always have these there. And again, so there are little prayer cards teaching. What I wrote up was the Salvetic prayer. And again, and I'm going to teach that to you really quickly, the down and dirty version of it, okay? Really quick, okay? So when you have something going on, whether it's emotional, physical, or spiritual going on in your life, you take time. Always start with breathing, get connected to that God who dwells within you, and you look at, at, at Jesus, you look at the wounds. So, I mean, when I have someone with cancer or who has pain, I've seen this work so many times, where when they begin to meditate on the wounds of Jesus and leave and, and, and understand which wound did he suffer for what's, for what's going on in your life. Cancer, pain, heart disease, depression, anxiety, fear, um, you know, unforgiveness, whatever that might be. Where has he already suffered for that? Remember, he suffered for us so that we can get into the kingdom and have access back into heaven. So maybe I look at this and I say, oh, it's his, it's his hand. It's the nail in his hand here. And I meditate on the pain that he must have been going through. The tremendous pain that goes in. Every time he had to breathe, he had to, had to move his arms, and that pain would shoot up and down his arm. Tremendous pain. And again, and so I just focus on there, and I focus on that. I may even be, begin to feel it on my body, that pain. But again, it's not going to last. Don't worry. And I look at that. I look at that nail mark, and I look at what he's gone through. I get emotionally connected now. 
and with compassion to what he has done for us. And then what I do is I leave that there. So maybe there's someone I had I had one woman who had ovarian cancer and she and I had her meditate on the cross. I had her meditate found the right spot for her. And again, and, and so she, and I said, then now I want you to leave your pain in your cancer in that nail mark. I said, now take a deep breath. You don't need to hold on to it anymore. So maybe initially my hand was hurting or getting cramped or getting a feeling this warm, this feeling uh, from, of the pain that you may begin to feel. And, and, and But it'll go away. Once you leave it there, then it'll dissipate. And now I've left it there, and, I, and, and I'm loving the Lord for what he's done. And I'm getting con- connected compassionately to him. Pope Francis said, the cross is the doorway of faith back into heaven, back into relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This cross, then what I do is after I leave it there, I imagine as though I can walk through it or it's like a door. I open it up and I can go straight into heaven. So for me, what happens to me is, is, is after I pass through the cross, for me, I always see this, the, the purple veil and I see where it's been torn. See, the veil in the temple represents, it was torn when he died, remember? It was two feet thick. It was really thick. And it was torn. Scripture tells us that that represents the wounds of Jesus. And on that day, because of what he did, it was torn open. And now we have access for what's on the other side of there. Heaven. Access to an intimate relationship. So then I, and then I, I have my eyes closed. I get beyond the cross, get to the veil, and then I go through the veil, and I'm in heaven now. And it, sometimes the Father meets me there. Sometimes all three meet me there, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, sometimes it's one. Sometimes it's just Jesus. And lots of times I'm, I, 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 it's like I'm sitting by a stream, and I'm just sitting there with him, and I just sit with him. And he talks to me about my situation. And now I'm looking at things from the other side of the world. The world, there's time. But in heaven, there's no time. Now I'm connected to God and I can pray from where he's at, where there's no time. Time's not important now because I already know he's going to take care of it. So I pray as though it's already happened. When you can begin to pray like that, great signs and great wonders can happen in your life. When you learn how to leave it at the cross and get back into heaven, you've just learned a powerful way to pray. That woman, she had she, she had she had had gone to chemo that day, and and her pain was that she said, "I said from zero to ten, where's it at?" She said, "Uh, it's a 12. and it's tremendous." She had all this abdominal pain. She had ovarian cancer, but just when she was able to meditate like that, within a few minutes. So after after we get done doing the meditation, I said, okay, now where's your pain? I have no pain. It's gone. She was totally healed of stage four ovarian cancer. You can be healed of what's gone on in your life, whether it's physical, emotional, or spiritual. Know the power of the cross and your access into heaven. God bless you. And pray like Dominic and the other mystics and saints. And when we do, we're going to see breakthrough in our prayer. As we say, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Come to the next healing mass, and I'll have those cards there uh, that talk about the Salvatic prayer. So you'll always be able to have it in your Bible. God bless you and have a wonderful week. See you next Monday.